everyone. Today we got to play Red Cathedral to match my hair. Um, but before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because you want to know more about board games and you would also like to support us. Um, so before we get started, tell us more about this game, Randy. Well, this is, I believe, the last of my birthday games that we haven't hadn't played yet. Yes, so. correct. Uh, but this one came out in 2020. It's got a Board Game Geek rating of 8.0, mm -hmm. rank of 614. Mm -hmm. uh, it's age 10 and up, one to four players. Average is, uh, it says 80 minutes on the box, but on Board Game Geek it said 30 to 120 minutes. I think probably 80 minutes is about right. Yeah. Um, so the designers were Isra C and Shay S. They didn't have last names listed. Uh, artists were uh, Kima Roman and Pedro Soto. Publisher was Asmodee. It's a dice rolling a rondelle and area majority game. Okay, so um, let's talk about quality of pieces. So you do have um, appropriately shaped resources of the wood variety. Except for the gold. The gold is so funny looking. <laughs> the gold looks like popcorn, buttered popcorn instead. So I mean, It's you, a gold nugget. It's supposed to be a gold nugget. If the currency is buttered popcorn, you're in luck. Well, it's supposed to be gold. Uh, the gems are pretty. The gems are like the best piece out of all of these because they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then you have crappy coins. Yeah, these are really horrible. We played with our poker chip. Yeah, coins. you have some more cardboard bits, a bunch of cardboard bits. Uh, card quality, um, there's no linen finish. They're kind of, they're kind of the crappy, like these are going to get torn up. But to be fair, they don't really, you don't shuffle them and they just yeah. stay there. But the so. score markers actually have screen printing or on the back side yeah. for the numbers. That was really cool. That was pretty cool. So overall, I'm actually probably going to give this a six and a half. There are a few things that are better, but not by much. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, they're basic dice, the standard dice, and mm -hmm. the cards are not great. I mean, the gems are pretty cool. So, yeah, I think six and a half is fair. All right, so moving on to theme. So basically, you're building the Red Cathedral, um, and you definitely the art is definitely reminiscent of that, so I think it was spot on for that. Um, and you're going down... Um, and collecting resources. I don't know what the seasons have to do with anything. I, I, I really think it was just to show the passage of time with the fact that you're building this cathedral. It's going to take many years to build. Oh. But it's mainly it's divided into four sections, and that season's lined up nicely with that, I'm guessing. But Okay. And it made the art interesting as you go around showing the different seasons. Yeah, I mean, I just... Well, okay. Well, and the thing is, is, so you flip over these cards to actually build this cathedral, right? And then you get to place adornments on them. I think that's yeah. kind well, of the cards are represent blueprints, so it's each space. Is yeah, but then when you flip it section. over, it actually becomes yeah, the completed the completed thing, which is pretty cool. Um, so overall, theme wise, I don't think it was crazy heavy, but I think it was pretty decent. You know, it was yeah. okay, and it was consistent. So I'd give this a seven. Well, I think it integrates into the play with the building of the cathedral. I thought right. that was really cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think the art is pretty for you know, and it, it does give so you. So would you give this focus. seven or no? I, I think I'm about a probably about a seven point five. Okay, okay. So um, moving on to rules. Well, there were a lot of rule books. There were five in the box, all the same size, shape. These they're small boxes, but all books, different languages, right? All different languages. Twenty page book. Uh, the book is actually pretty well segmented. It's got color coding to tell you which section you're in. Um, it's a, it's a actually for being a small box game. It's a pretty in depth game. It's yeah, actually, it, it, yeah. You were kind of happy about this. Yes, it was meatier than you would normally get in a box this size. So I, I always like that. It makes me happy because I don't like small box games. But this one didn't well, feel like so that. It's so funny that most of your birthday gifts were small box games this year, and I think most of them really pulled out. So I think small boxes. I think they're getting I better. I think they're up in their I little game a little bit, hopefully man. Hopefully they are. Hopefully they're getting better. Or we uh, just got a good series of them. <laughs> it's got a solitaire mode, so that's the back couple pages of this. So the rule book isn't hard to read, and it's got a lot of good images and references. I think they did a really outstanding job with this rule book. I'm going to go ahead and give this one, I think, a nine. It, it was really concise. It really did its job. Mm -hmm. It did it well. We didn't have any confusion in the game. Okay, cool. All right. So 
let's move on to actual gameplay. So gameplay is actually pretty straightforward. You have um, three actions that you can take in the course of your turn. So one of the first actions is to um, claim a part of the uh, cathedral that you're going to build. So you take one of your flags and you place it on the area that you want to build. And then you will take the token that is on there and you can either choose to place it face up or face down. If you choose to place it face up, you have to pay the coin cost of the placement that you have on your player board, which ranges from two to four coins. You place it there and every time you move that color of dice, um, you will get that benefit. However, uh, white has two options, but you only can choose one benefit per dice roll for that. Now, yeah, well, the, the same... other thing is when you move the flag, you're bringing up an inventory space. Correct. Because you have a, a limit of 10 inventory, but four are occupied by flags at the beginning. Yes. So the also the other thing is about placement. So if you don't complete a bottom building before someone completes a top, you have to pay a penalty in victory points, right? Because there's actually two victory there, well, there's victory points in this game, but then there's also renown and so, or prestige points in renown. Um, anyway, and so renown is smaller increments of, of prestige points. So um, typically when you build the temples, you're getting prestige, uh, renown points and several renown points make up a prestige point. So, but you actually you lose prestige points when you don't complete, if you don't complete the bottom row before the top, when you pick them out. So it almost is advantageous for you to pick some of the top ones at first because you have a lot longer to build them. Um, but the lower ones give you more benefit. They give you more right. coin and victory points. Yeah, so it's ones. kind of risky, you know. So um, it's just kind of risky, guys. You gotta take the risk whether you're gonna take it or not. Um, all right, so that is one action. The other action is you can place an adornment. So say if I actually were to build that well actually first let's talk about building buildings so i've claimed this okay and i've decided that i have resources and i can choose to drop three resources off um to the cathedral if i choose that action and then i can drop them off and when i've completed all of the card then i can flip it over um and it's like this so that is another action i can take however you instead of placing them on a building you can choose to use those three resources to build an adornment so an adornment is you have one door, two windows, and one cathedral top um, cross that you can use to place on a particular type of card. So only the bottom row has doors, um, the middle have the windows, and the very tip top of the towers have the um, cross ability on them. So say instead, so it takes a wood to build a door, so I place the door there. But then also, not only that though, but if I were to have either a purple or green, I could choose to turn it in for a prestige point, or I can turn in both of them for three prestige points. So at the beginning of the game, that is actually very advantageous uh, because the prestige points are worth so much more renown at that juncture. So it's almost like you want to build, decorate, build, decorate fairly quickly um, to get that through, because um, then the renown will end up actually being equal to prestige points. So that's kind of, um, you have to get to a certain level to kind of ramp up on that, which I thought was an interesting um, component to this. So then one of the other actions, um, of course, is the um, moving of the dice. How do you actually get resources? And that's the dice movement. So if you can see here, they all have the different pips. The pips on there is how many sections that you can move. So for example, this three, I can move three segments, one, two, three, I end up landing and I end up getting two stone. However, if I were to take the same dice over here and go one, two, right? Because there are two dice, I get two of the bonuses, which in this case is two brick. So I would take four brick out. I would put them in my resources if I was capable of holding them, right? And then I would go to reroll the dice, place them back on, and that's the end of my and turn. And if you had your bonus unlocked, you would have got a bonus for the yellow movement. Of right, the which dot. in this case, my green does have a bonus. It has but one But you didn't break. move the green, you moved the yellow. But Correct. yeah, if you had the yellow one, then it would yes. give you a bonus. So. Correct. The other, also, I forget to mention, is that you can actually trigger this over here. So this card specifically tells you that if you move a dice in here, you automatically get one free renown, which is super nice um, doing that. 
And then I can also choose to um, get something else. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read the second arc. I don't think we had this card when we actually played. But that's the thing. Is so you have additional actions that you can take um, with those cards added to just getting resources, which is actually kind of interesting. In fact, I ended up using it heavily at the end of the game, the last one, to actually put my resources on my building because I wasn't having enough time to get them on the board um, before they were going to end the game on me, which wasn't nice. Um, so um, that's overall most of them. I think we went over the prestige versus renown. Um, overall, this, this this is a lot meatier than, than mm -hmm. what we expected out of a small bucks game. And I actually enjoy this. This is, I would say, light to medium. Um, and it was, it was good. It was interesting. And yet it was small, compact, and it didn't take a horribly long amount of time because a lot of the games that are more meteor end up taking yeah. two, three, four hours, which is something, you know, we like to do, but not necessarily always have time to do. So, um, this was actually a good side weight for me. I would actually probably give this, um, an eight. I really enjoyed this game. I thought it was good. It was solid. There was a lot of good mechanisms in it. That made it interesting and new and different. Well, what were your thoughts? I, I thought, it, you know, I like the fact that it has a little bit of an engine builder in the sense you're building your own tableau over here. But there is still player interaction with the cathedral. Yes, the absolutely. Fact that, you know, you, you can interrupt other people's plays by playing and causing them to lose victory points by building above them. Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't a huge factor in the game, but it, 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 it did. It, it, it did impacted. touch a couple yeah. of times, right? But it wasn't so horrific that it was right. like, Oh no, you destroyed me. I never want to play again. <laughs> you know, those games, because there are some games that it is that brutal. Mm -hmm. You're just like, well, that just set me back. Just like uh, that game of uh, Waterdeep we played. <laughs> We're still not done with that one yet. Okay. Um, so. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably at an 8.5 on this. I really did enjoy this game a lot. Uh, for being a small box game, this is something you can easily port with you somewhere. Yeah. Now, you don't need a table because it does take up a decent amount of space for being a small box game, especially with you building the cathedral. Yeah, but you can e easily take this around. And, yeah. Yeah. It's easy, easy to throw in a, a suitcase, but it is going to take up a table. So you will need wherever you go to find a table to play it on. Mm -hmm, correct. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's it's a fun game for being as small pack, compact as it is. Uh, yeah, so I think an 8.5 is a fair score for this. Yeah. Well, guys, we had an absolute blast, and we'll hope to catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.